Oh my God, we are muted. We're starting we off on the right foot. We are muted. Maybe it was the hurricane, that, the is, hurricane. that is hitting us right now. <laughs> um, hi, I'm Hunter Foster. I'm the artistic director for Red House. And welcome to Red Talks, which we do every Tuesday night at 6.30. And uh, with me, I have a very special guest, is the producing artistic director for the Kate Playhouse uh, in Dennis, Massachusetts, um, uh, uh, Mr. Michael Rader. Hey. So I was going to call you Michael Arnold for a second. I don't know why that came up. <laughs> Michael Arnold Rader. Michael Three Arnold names are Arnold Rader right now. Yeah. So obviously we're in the very similar um, situations. Um, we yeah. are uh, have theaters and we're not really uh, allowed to do theater right now. And how have you guys been um, sort of handling that? Well, this has been... Uh, you know, we are a summer theater. We produce over about 14 weeks over the summer with six or seven shows. And so this was really challenging for us because we basically lost our entire season. Yeah. Um, so we, we've we been working all summer to uh, integrate some outdoor programming. We have some concerts we're starting to do this month. We've been doing drive-in movies, which you came to. I went to see Jaws. Very, very exciting. Yeah. Uh, which has gone really well for us. Um, so, you know, we're thinking outside the box. What can we do that we can still offer some sort of arts and entertainment, live entertainment to the community? Um, and we're going to do some music events, some speaker series. Um, one of the interesting things, and maybe you really picked up on this as well, but we've, uh, we've started to have discussions already about this alternate programming that we're doing is being received well by the community. And how do we start in the future? Or is this something that we want to integrate as part of our uh, outdoor, like an outdoor season, series in the summer? We want to keep offering to the community. Yeah, yeah. I think that's it's uh, what pandemic has done is it's uh, also helped us be creative in a way of thinking yeah. like how does theater change? How does yeah. how 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 does our approach to audiences change to, to everything? You know, because we've been doing, um, um, I'm sure you, you've been doing your own weekly show. We've been doing our own weekly show here on Red Talks. We've been doing uh, readings on Zoom. Um, we've, we've created a couple Zoom plays. Um, we've been doing, you know, and I know that there's been every theater person across the country has been trying to figure out how to do yep. new new ways of telling stories and, and, and um, doing theater. And, you know, we're going to keep trying to do it because, and that's what's so, I think, great about theater people is we don't allow this to sort of hold us down. Mm. Um, just, I was part of, I mean, I was part of here in town when, uh, during 9-11 and we had yeah. similar, uh, this is very different though. It's very different. This, this is, yeah. this is, seems much worse. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had moved, I had just moved to New York in 9-11 and I, I had the same feeling that felt like we emerged from that quicker than this. Yeah. Where it feels like we are, we're reinventing things right now. Um, for the art form that we weren't necessarily doing that. No. Yeah. Now, um, in case you don't know, the Kate Playhouse has had a long history um, here. It's It goes back how, how long? 1927 was the inaugural year. 1927. So 94 years. And is the first time it's been dark? No. First time, well, first time it's been dark since World War II. Wow, yeah. first time since World War II. Yep. And, a, and a, a lot of stars have, have worked here over the years. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna go backstage and show you some of the posters of some of the people that have, have worked here. Um, it has, it, back in the day, there was a circuit, mm -hmm. right? In which um, stars would go through a lot of the theaters up yep. here. Mm -hmm. uh, and and, and it, it was big, huge Hollywood names. And the, what were the other, do you know, remember the other theaters that were on the circuit? Sure, of Westport. There was a, actually a theater in Falmouth, the Falmouth Playhouse. Um, um, uh, uh, Westport, it a, it a North Shore, Agunquit, yeah, yeah. Uh, Falmouth Playhouse, and they would just make the circle. And um, that model is no longer in existence today. Now we do partnerships with some of those theaters. We'll, you know, uh, we'll do a show with like uh, Bucks County Playhouse, for example. We'll share that with them. But that old circuit of uh, traveling all the way around, all the way around. Actually, Olivia De Havilland, who uh, just passed away last week, mm. um, she performed here, and I, I was so excited that. We had we had unearthed some documents from our archives when she performed here, uh, and then we found out. Well, actually, she performed at that summer alone at like forty-two other theaters as she as she did a circle around the United States of of, of the production. So wow, yeah, yeah. yeah and so uh, uh, I, I started here as an actor back in two thousand four in a production of um, uh, Let Me Tenor. Uh, my wife and I. So we've had an association for sixteen years, and it's been a really. Uh, um, sort of home away from home from us. We, we love coming back to the Cape. We actually spent the past two weeks here on the Cape. We really wanted to just sort of 
it felt like it can't be a summer without being on the Cape. <laughs> but we were going to do a re we were going to do an outdoor reading, yep. and it didn't pan out. There's a lot of stuff going on with rules about things you can and can't can't do, and so we weren't. Uh, so we were going to come up here and do a reading for Michael, and, and it didn't quite work out. But hopefully, that next year that uh, things will get back on its feet. And you're planning to do the exact same season that you had planned. Picking it up and just moving it next year. Okay. Yeah. And, yeah. That, and those shows were? Uh, we start with Private Lives, which is actually a tribute to Gertrude Lawrence. Jen is going to tell you about Gertrude Lawrence in a little bit. She was our one of our matriarchs of the theater. Uh, she did the show at the West End and Broadway and then brought it here. And she actually met her husband here. And so it's a little tribute to her. And then a Red House recent, God of Carnage, going to be here as well, which has never been done at the Playhouse, so we're really excited to do that. And then we're the Cape uh, Cod premiere of American Paris, mm, and that. then we're doing uh, a really exciting production of Patsy Cline with a really amazing American Idol star who we can't announce yet. Uh, and then we do our audience favorite of the season, Grease. You know, yes. very well. <laughs> 1,100 performances. I did uh, 11, oh my gosh. Yeah. Did you know that? I did. Actually, we just watched your Tony performance the other day. I don't I forget why it came on, but I said, yeah. there's 100. Oh, yeah. if you really want to see something really crazy, uh, do, Billy Porter was our teen angel. Oh. Did you know that? No. Oh, yeah, yeah. So Billy oh Porter, I mean, this is the most amazing oh. cast for Grease. Megan Mullally mm -hmm. was Marty. Rosie O'Donnell was Rizzo. Yep. Uh, Jessica Stone, she's a very talented director, actor, mm -hmm. was 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 um, uh, Frenchie, mm -hmm. Jen was uh, Cha Cha, Billy Porter was uh, Teen Angel, um, Sam Harris was Duty. Oh. Like we had this really uh, a who's who of uh, it was really really it was a great cast. But um, we did Jay Leno, and oh. um, Billy Porter sings "Beauty School Dropout" on Jay Leno. It's not to be missed. Check it out. All right. It's really, it's really Look it up. Yep. Check it out. Check it out. <laughs> now, um, obviously, uh, every theater is um, different. You know, at Red House, we sort of have a it's it's a year long theater, and actually, we take the summers off and we have summer camps for our kids. But you do a summer theater mm -hmm. in which um, six shows are being done in a short amount of time. Um, we shared a production manager, Dan, Dan oh. Whiting, who came yeah. from from us, uh, came from the Cape, and came to Red House. And I remember him saying, like, you know, the, 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 the turnover of going from show to show to show to show and how quick it is, because the show will end on Saturday mm -hmm. and then you're up again on Wednesday now. We open on Wednesday. Open on yes, Wednesday. but we're starting rehearsals. We close on Saturday, but we're starting tech rehearsals essentially Sunday night. Yeah, yeah. it's crazy. So you're putting six shows in in a span of four months. Is that right? Four months? It's three, uh, no, 12 weeks, three months. Yeah. Crazy. Wow. And it's amazing what they can do here. You know, they have a, a team of um, interns mm -hmm. and apprentices, Princes, yep. and they it's well, I've seen them do miracles. It's 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 crazy. But in the old days, <laughs> I don't know how you guys did this. We just this is the crazy part. In the old days, when we first worked here, we would do we'd rehearse for two weeks in New York. We would drive up on Sunday. Mm -hmm. We would have the picnic. You always have a big barbecue on Sunday nights out in the lawn. You do te you tech from. Uh, seven to twelve, mm -hmm. you turn around, come back in from twelve to five the next day, and then you open on Monday night. <laughs> that was insane. insane. And sometimes you would insane. never, you would never finish oh, teching sure. the show. Yeah. So if you don't know what teching is, it's like the lights, the costumes, all those things you sort of add to it. We would we just going out, walking out, not even knowing what was gonna, what was gonna happen. I mean, because like I said, you never even had gone through the show on stage. Mm -hmm. um, so tell us a little, I mean, this is a, a remarkable theater. And as you can see behind us, this is the audience. And it's there. It's pews, actually. You sit mm -hmm. on pews, and we had a discussion about the, about the pews. Yeah. But <laughs> tell us a little bit about the pews. And this was a, a so before, okay. the, 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 where you and I are sitting, the stage was added in 1927. A, a building a mile down the road, which is where the audience sits, um, was moved here in 1927 by horse, horses, and I, I don't know how they moved the building in 1927, but I, I'm sure it was not easy. Uh, and this part of the building used to be a slaughterhouse, it was a church, a meeting house at one point, a tin house. Um, so when they moved it here, the architect kept all of the pews that were there, and then they added the stage, the fly loft, all of the dressing rooms, the wings, um, and just basically tagged that on on uh, on the front of the, the building. Yeah, it's yeah. you sit in pews, and you know they're they've been it's they've been here. It's been a staple of the, mm -hmm. of the, of the playhouse. <laughs> they're not comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're not, but they do. I mean, they're, they it, but there is something about coming in here and seeing those. Um, 
But anyway, yeah, it's it has you can and you can sort of when you come in, you can sort of feel the history. A lot of a lot of places on Cape Cod um, feel like uh, you can just you can sense the history, you can smell the history, and and there's you can definitely come in here and smell the history. Obviously, Gertrude Lawrence was this was her theater, mm -hmm. and uh, you know this was um, a, a home for her. And um, at home from a lot of other really, really great stars who came through here. Um, and so just just in, in talking about, you know, the theater in the future, especially during the, the during COVID, you know, I mean, are you hopeful? I mean, I'm, I'm hopeful that we're going to figure this this out. I mean, I couldn't be more hopeful. Good. Uh, just being just being in here now with you is, you know, it's just you forget how much you miss live entertainment yes, and live yes. theater and how special this is and um, your friends. And, you know, we we we've all been so isolated that, um, yeah, I'm so hopeful. Yeah, I I, um, I I really hope that we can get to a place by this time next year where people are comfortable being back in theaters where, where, where whether that's a vaccine or or whatever it is that we have that we all feel that now we can gather again i'm 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 really and hopeful and anticipating i mean i think yeah. it's the hard part is is that you know as much as we love the zoom plays and as much as we love do, doing all these things and and is it that i think that sort of initial reaction that 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 feedback from an audience that you know, for me, I'm sure, and it's for you sitting in the audience and feeling the uh, energy of, uh, while you're directing a show, and 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 sort of like, oh my God, they love this, or they they're crying here, or they're laughing here. I mean, I, that that part I miss, and especially with with the actors not getting the feedback back, especially for comedies, not hearing the laughter, not hearing the applause, has been, um, I think, the hardest part, and and the camaraderie. I mean, we we have it, it. It feels like there's something about theater if you don't know. Is that it becomes a family? Um, you, mm -hmm. you, even if you're rehearsing for two weeks, I mean, you're you're you, become, you bond, and especially when you come to the Cape, which which feels oh my god, it's raining! It's now the rain is coming. Um, <laughs> the hurricane but, is here. Yeah, the hurricane is here. But it feels like, especially at the Cape, because there's so many wonderful things that come along with not just performing at the Cape. Is the bonfires, mm -hmm. the barbecues, the beach? Like it's, and you really bond, and it and it just feels like um, it feels like summer camp. So it's really <laughs> an experience, unlike you mm -hmm. know. Uh, and it's the same thing in Syracuse. You know, you, we mm -hmm. we we are downtown theater, and people can. It, the, the wonderful thing I think is is you have a, an urban experience, and and that's something that's more attuned to like the rest of the year. And this is more sort of, sort of summer. Um, so you know, it's it's just I, I always feel sad when shows close because it feels like a part of me is sort of uh, or th this experience has ended and will never happen again mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. so uh theater is a really wonderful thing and we need to bring it back and we need to donate so <laughs> if you want to donate please go to the redhouse.org which goes. is right down there we got a lot of uh, yes a lot of things coming up so please donate it's not just for the theater just understand the theater affects everything around it it affects the the restaurants it affects parking it affects the stores right here, here in dennis we have restaurants everywhere and we have um and you know there's there's the beach yes but people want want to have entertainment at night so they need to have this this is this affects everything just like red house affects everything it's a ripple effect so please donate it's gonna it's gonna help um the communities that surround these theaters um also go to the cape playhouse you can donate to the cape playhouse website as well absolutely yes yep in any theater around the country that need, needs needs your help right now because we are not theater's not getting a whole lot of love mm -hmm. you know they think that uh theater is, is sort of um not essential mm -hmm. but i believe i'm telling you it is essential and i keep saying this after 9 11 uh people needed live theater in order to help them get through such, such a traumatic experience so we need to do the same mm -hmm. we need to keep theater alive so that we can come back strong um, before we move on to, to our guests, um, so we're two sort of um, uh, big alumni here who have done, mm -hmm. God, how many shows has Jen done? They're 13? 15, 13, uh, I, I met a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yes. There's discrepancies, but but more than we think anybody else probably. So Jen Cody um, and John Shearer have probably done a combined 100,000 shows yeah. here at Cape <laughs> Playhouse, and so we're gonna. <laughs> this was uh, Jen Cody, oh, right here, Gypsy. and this is a fantastic costume uh, for the one production of Gypsy mm. that you directed. First show I did at the Cape. Look at that costume. Oh. Who, who did the costumes? Uh, Gail Baldoni. Oh, Gail did. Yeah. Oh, my God, yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. 
Uh, we hung out with Julia um, Verney. Oh yeah, two days I ago. Talked to her today. Yeah, yeah. This was the the show that. Uh, let me see if I can bring it up. There we go. Oh, yeah. Boeing, Boeing. Um, that John, Jen, and I did. Oh God, I don't even know how long ago this was. My, my favorite is Jen's expression. Jen's in the yellow skirt <laughs> of just like, what the hell have I gotten myself into? Which I've seen that a lot around the house. Um, so we also have um, last year's big hit was uh, Ooh, Noises Off, off yeah. which was a really great show. And I came to the final performance and the curtain actually ripped. Yeah. We had this big hand painted drop across the stage and it, at, at the stop, top of act two, it flew out and, and then was done for the rest of the show. But that night, we something had gotten caught right here. And as it, as it flew up, flew away, it got caught and it just ripped the whole thing. And then it kept, they tri kept trying to raise it higher and it kept ripping and ripping. Well, the crew came out with a ladder. Everybody in the audience thought it was part of the show because the show is about a piece of theater that's falling apart. And they loved it. Yeah. It, but thank God it was the last night because we didn't need the set after that. My favorite one, so the two the crew guys, these two young crew guys bring out this gigantic ladder. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was huge. Yeah. And then the audience was just gasping because they were going up to on this gigantic ladder to like fix the big set. It was, it was crazy. Yeah. Uh, so uh, this is John Shear and the foreigner looking miserable. <laughs> uh, and this is a, this is a, just to give you a shot because we, we're not outside because it's torrential rains right now. This is the Cape, right here. There it is. Oh, there she yeah. is. Yeah. So it's uh, it's a really wonderful wonderful building. Um, do you have any? What is your favorite story from the past or even the present? But just things that have happened here at the Cape. Any sort of. We had a, actually, it, it's very apropos right now because last summer we were doing a production of um, A Chorus Line and on the very first night of Full Tech, we had tornadoes that came through the Cape and oh, knocked yeah. out our power. And so that was Sunday night or Monday and we didn't get power back for four days, or three days. We didn't get power back until Wednesday night. I was on the stage giving the curtain speech for the opening night. We had generators so we could turn on enough lights to illuminate the stage. We had no air conditioning. It was the middle, end of God. July, beginning of August. It was incredibly hot. Uh, and as I'm giving the curtain speech, I hear the, the movable lights start doing shoo, 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 shoo. Like I hear everything like ramping up. And my assistant runs down the aisle and says, the power's on, the power's on, it's coming back on. And I can hear the cast going crazy behind us on stage. And so we decided to, to run the show. The lighting designer had been programming the cues, the lighting cues, there was lots of moving lights he was programming them blind meaning he was typing all it in what he wanted to have happen but never actually seeing what it looked like so the first time we got to see the show and the lighting designer got to see what the lights looked like was as we were running it for an audience on opening night and it was just it was a magical moment that people think we orchestrated and made up but it really actually it really actually happened it's theater man yeah. i mean and the cape is notorious for losing power that's why we have our fingers crossed i right can't now. believe we haven't <laughs> yes uh and so we we were doing um uh, boeing boeing and uh yes it was, it was boeing boeing and the lights went out during a oh. scene me and john share right in the scene together lights go out darkness audience groans lights come back on and John, without skipping a beat, said, because the show is taking place in Paris, and he goes, Paris, city of lights, which was one of my favorite ad libs of all time. <laughs> and uh, so speaking of John Scher and Jen Cody, uh, we'd like to bring them on right now, and they're back. Hello. hear us you guys it's a hurricane <laughs> we just got an outer band oh my gosh okay it's just us now um we are backstage in the star dressing room of the cape playhouse also and known as gertie's room because gertrude lawrence. it's the gertrude lawrence dressing room yeah she was the first lady of the theater she was married, married to richard aldrich who was the artistic director of the theater for years for years and so she would come in summer here and, and they get all their famous friends to come here too. Yeah, and perform. <laughs> and uh, so this dressing room, this picture is of Gertrude Lawrence and the King and I, which I think was one her of last. Her, one of her biggest. I think biggest it was her last, and Broadway, her last show. Broadway show. Um, and so here's the thing about the lore of the Cape Playhouse: 
is that, I'm gonna turn the camera a little bit more. Nope, maybe I'm not. Maybe I'm not gonna do that. How about that? Okay, I'll just move in. Um, so one of the, the lures that comes with the dressing room is that when you are given this dressing room, you have to bring her a vase of um, flowers on opening night or the show will be a disaster. You have and to bring her favorite flower, which was the blue, blue hydrangea, which are all over the cane. Or was it? It wasn't. <laughs> because last year I finally read, there's um, her biography is here. I finally read it and her favorite flower was the white lily. It was not the blue hydrangea. So all these years. All these years. Who knew? And if you do not bring blue hydrangeas, bad things happen. John, would you like to tell us what happened? Well, I, I would. I brought the blue hydrangeas, but unfortunately, I also did a little trick to the picture. I, I shrunk a picture of a friend of mine and I put it in the palm of her hand right here. And um, that night when I went to take my curtain call, this huge piece of scenery fell down and smacked the floor about a foot upstage of me. If I had been standing in the wrong place, I would not currently be experiencing the <laughs> outer band of Isaias. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm not kidding y'all. It it's really loud in here. Yeah. Um, another thing we wanted to tell you is that um, they do a lot of, they used to do a lot of tours and they bring people in and show them all backstage, which we're going to do for you in a second. They say that Gertrude Lawrence haunts this theater. There are he, many stories about it. People have heard but her. this is the most famous one, I think. So, they were giving a tour and they were standing in a circle on the stage and they were talking about the ghost of, of Gertrude Lawrence and all of a sudden from the rafters falls a little piece of paper. This. And I don't know, oh wait, which way do I go? Closer. This way. I don't know if closer. you can see it. It's very hard. The ring light is the just, ring light is reflected we're not good at this. On the glass case. But what is it, John? It's a little piece of paper and it's Gertrude Lawrence's signature. It says, Miss Gertrude Lawrence, 1943. It fell from the rafters. How do you like that? How about that? Kind of amazing. Yeah. Um, there was a, a movie made of Gertrude Lawrence's life called Star, and it starred Julie Andrews as Gertrude Lawrence. We're going to come over and here. There's a picture of Julie Andrews getting her hair done in this dressing room. In this room, dressing I room. Um, before one of the takes. Yeah, it and looks um, it looks a lot uh, different. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just a little bit. Just a little different. Um, I'm gonna do that. Yeah. So now what we're gonna do is we are gonna cut to backstage and we're gonna show you the posters. One of the great things about this theater is the the history of it. Um, it's a who's who of American theater. Everybody played here. Shirley Booth, Ben Gazzara, Hume Cronin, Jessica Tandy. Yeah, and what they do is they, they have saved all of the show posters since when? Since like, 1927. Like, they're, they're, look, if you Eva Legallion is up on one of the posters. I don't know Nobody who even is. knows who that is. <laughs> there you go. Yes. Um, so this is, so my favorite um, performer that I try to emulate in my life, um, can you see her right there? Her name is Nancy Walker. She, you probably know her as the Bounty Paper Towel Woman. Or Rhoda's mother. Or Rhoda's from, mother. From Rhoda, if anybody remembers But she that. was the original Hildy in On the Town. Um, she's four foot 11. And she actually performed on the stage many times. She has her, her face on, on a lot of these posters. And just to be able to say I danced on the same stage as Nancy Walker's it makes it's me cry. Just it really amazing. Does. Yeah. yeah. There are so many uh, posters here that have names of really funny plays that you try and imagine what the plots are. My two of my favorites are this is one of them. It's Kitty Carlisle in Don't Frighten the Horses. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the plot was. I, I was saying to Jen before, and it's, it's. I mean, Kitty Carlisle was a beautiful woman, but she did have a long face, so it's an unfortunate title. I don't think she played that. the horse. <laughs> well, we don't know. We don't know what the play's about. We don't know what the play's about, But right. don't frighten it. Don't frighten it. So then going out. And there's Art Carney in The Prisoner of Second Avenue. Yeah, just I starts. Believe it's a, isn't that a Neil Simon play? I'm not sure. Is it? I, it could be. Can yeah. you hear the hurricane? And then louder. as you go up the stairs, there are many, many other... Um, the Jerry Orbach. Oh, Jerry Orbach. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, I don't know what that play is. Um, my favorite poster is coming up, and it's another uh, game Wait. show person oh, there she is. named Arlene Francis in Who Killed oh, Santa Claus? Claus? What is this play about? And there is a story about Arlene Francis where she accidentally knocked her air conditioner out of her New York apartment and killed somebody on the street. <laughs> and was this pre this I show? I just or wonder after? if it was Santa Claus. I mean, maybe that's the plot of the show. I have no idea. Just dress up in a red suit and get bonked on the head with the air conditioner, and you're all set. Um, the cool part about that.
at the Cape is that each dressing room is um, is named after a different star that played here. There's pictures of, and I don't know if we've lost footage, but we have like Betty White is on one of them. Humphrey um, Bogart. Humphrey Bogart. Is on one of them. Um, and Margaret Hamilton, who was, uh, of course, the, the Wicked, Wicked Witch, Witch and the Wizard of Oz. And on the campus. Okay, there's Betty White. Oh, there's That's Betty not White. Margaret Hamilton. She did a lot of plays here with her husband, Alan Ludden, also a game show host. <laughs> it's very, but, um, a lot of themes going on. Oh, so here she is. So she was the Wicked Witch of the West. And on the campus of the Playhouse, there's there's cinema. an art gallery and there's a cinema. And the movie of The Wizard of Oz started here. It was it the first place it, it premiered. premiered here at the Cape, How about that? Cape Cinema. Strange. Yeah. Um, moving on. More posters. More posters. There's Humphrey. Humphrey Bogart. That's Humphrey Bogart dressing room. That's Nobody the only thing. Brady Bunch. That's Brady the only Bunch. thing we That's know about got. Humphrey Bogart. We'll always um, have Paris. But the other posters that are up there that I love is like um, Gabe Kaplan did oh, Groucho. Groucho here. Uh -huh. Captain Steubing from The Love Boat did also NASA Peel. Also Gavin Gavin McLeod. Shirley Booth. And mourning in a funny hat, which is another play. That I think Never is a heard. Really oh, look. funny name. Oh, what? Dodie with Goodman. Dodie Goodman. You can't go oh. wrong with that. I wonder if she wore a funny hat. I, I'm sure she did. She didn't need it. She has a funny voice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There you go. <laughs> oh, and there's there's Van Johnson and Boeing Boeing. Oh, so Isn't that, that? We, we saw pictures of us when we did Boeing. When we were well, actually, when we were doing Moon Over Buffalo here, Jen saw that poster up there, and she suggested to the producer that we should do that play the next year, and that's how that happened. And that's how the three of us. Got stuck together. <laughs> Radar, Radar O'Reilly, Gary Berghoff, and the Owl and the Pussycat. That's amazing. Um, so we are going to keep going down the stairs over here, right? Oh, there's the Gabe Kaplan and stuff like that. Um, and yeah. we were also talking about uh, crazy things that, so when people came here, they came for the summers, right? They brought trunks. They brought um, their families. Uh, it was not like it is now where you just come and do two weeks and you leave. Um, so we were talking about like the craziest things stars showed up with to summer on the Cape. Um, and Michael Crater was telling us the funniest one. So Michael, we're going to cut to you and okay. tell us what was the funniest thing someone brought. Well, I've heard a lot of stories about, about interesting things people have brought, but I think the best, try just try to beat it, was that um, Miss Tallulah Bankhead had come to the playhouse. She performed here a few times over her career, and she showed up at the train station with a pet lion in tow. <laughs> a pet lion, and of course, who came to the rescue? Miss Gertrude Lawrence came, took care of the lion, tamed the lion so that you know Tallulah could go to rehearsals and I, I, that's I've amazing. never had a lion show up since then. No lion since then. Some other things, but no lions. Yeah. Wow, that's just crazy. It's I was born yeah. in the wrong era. I feel like I would have a too. lion. Yeah. Oh, you would have a lion. <laughs> totally. I would yes, have you a lion. would. Um, yay! Well, that's backstage. And um, Michael, thanks for letting us come back. Well, thank you for right for that incredible tour. That was just fantastic. And I'm so so honored to have you guys here. It's it's okay. warms thanks, my heart yeah. to have you back here. Yeah. Yay! Okay, well, I guess it's just us. Is it just us? I don't know. I'm gonna, just, I'm gonna throw it back. There it is. There's Hunter. Oh, hey, hey. Oh, oh. Hey. Oh, here we go. Because I can't ever figure out. Because I know I'm, I'm over here, and you're over there. Oh, right. But, yeah. <laughs> it's weird. It's like. Cause, <laughs> okay. Cause it is weird. It's weird. Yeah. So, um, let me ask you. What is the uh? What, <laughs> and I, I will say the same. Okay. What is the what is the best part about your job, and what is the least favorite part about your job? Um, the best part is getting able to bring people like you, Jen, John, to our community. Being able to bring the incredible talent and incredible productions that we can do to to this community and continue the legacy of this really amazing institution. Uh, the worst part of my job <laughs> is uh, Jen's laughing. <laughs> <laughs> We're in a hurricane, a pandemic and hurricane. The worst part of my job is um, is uh, not being able to do it, like not being able to produce year round. I, I would love to be able to do that. Have have events happening year round, and, and that'll be the you know the next phase for us. Well, I mean, if you can yeah. insulate the building, well, that's what we're working on. Yeah, yeah. This place, I mean, blow some insulation in there. Well, well, come yeah. on in, come on in, guys. Um, yeah, I mean, I think the best part of the job uh, is, I think I agree with you. It's like the, the community sort of outreach. It's, uh, mm -hmm. you know, when you, when, when you, oh, come on. Yeah. No, it's only, no, come on the front. So it's, it's, yeah, it's the community. I think the community around us, um, whether it's Dennis or whether it's Syracuse, it's like getting to know the people of the community and then um, 
especially working with the kids, which I never thought I was going to enjoy doing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I didn't. One, uh, of, I, I, one of my favorite times of the summer is like opening my office window and hearing the kids in the education program like doing theater games on the lawn or laughing on the lawn. It's so great. Yeah. I love that we have that for the community. Yeah. yeah. The worst part about my job is um, I wish I had more money. Because <laughs> you want to do, I mean, I have look, it's mm -hmm. every every theater, yeah. but it's like you want to just do so Aww. much. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> and speaking of, you can donate to the redhouse.org right here. Um, seriously, um, it's, 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 it makes a huge difference. Um, we've, we've taken, and not to get serious, but uh, we'll get serious. Um, uh, we've had to lay off a lot of our staff. Uh, we've had to cut back on the things that we can do. I'm sure the Cape is in the same same way, and 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 we don't have the staff that we normally have. We don't have the resources. We don't have the things that um, just because we can afford it, because we don't have revenue, we don't have the sort of things that sort of can come in. So any any, any size donation is helpful. I mean, it, if you, if for two dollars like that, this dollar right here that John Shear just gave me is going to go. Two dollars is going to go towards the My rent house. <laughs> But it, it all makes a difference. So please donate. Please donate to your local theaters. Donate to Red House. Donate to the Cape Play House. Is there anything else? You, any other anecdotes that you would like to? I mean, do you want to do some? Um, Can I get serious though? Yes, get serious. I'll say like these these theaters. They aren't going to stay around unless we all help. And I hate to say that, but this is a big deal to not have any funding, not having any shows, not have any help. Um, so save your local theater. Whether it be Red House or the Cape, or both, or both, or, both. or, or both. where where you are, just save them, help them any way you can. Yeah, so they could use it. John, I would just agree with that, and, and also with just um, the effect that it has each individual theater in its own community and support restaurants and other local businesses. So everybody wins when you support your local theater. Yeah, even the, um, you know, the, I was saying that like the, the amount of parking tickets that we, <laughs> <laughs> like just, I, mean, I know it sounds stupid, but like even think just tiny little things or parking meters or parking or all the, all that stuff that's at, and tax revenue that's all given uh, uh, for the, you know, for the, for the community and, the, and for the city. Um, um, so now that I have you all here, um, what we normally do is we sort of go around um, and we ask. Okay. I know I didn't tell you because no, didn't I didn't know. want you to prepare your answer. Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> well, we do this every every time on Red Talks. Is what's the one thing you've learned um, that the pandemic has either taught you or something you've learned about yourself about um, that you'll take away from this time? Obviously, this was an unprecedented time for all of us. Um, but like, is there something that you that you'll take away, hopefully, in a positive? Hmm. Sorry, Jen. Oh wow, really? Yeah. Um, what taking away from it? Or something you've learned, or any just something that that's that something that's changed you, or that you're different than you were before this. Um, you know, it puts everything in perspective. Yes, is what it does. You, uh, when the thing that you do, it's your passion, is taken away from you. You um you have to find other things to fill to fill your life, and to find that passion in everything. And so I guess that's it. Trying to find the joy that I have performing in other things. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if it's something new that I learned, but something that has been emphasized is, you know, in most crises that we go through, either in the country or in the world, um, we usually come together to find comfort with each other. Um, after 9-11, we all wanted to be together. And that's the horrible thing about this one is that we can't be together. But I think it's... Uh, it's brought up again how important it is that we are together and that's one of the again going back to the, the theater it's one of the great things is that we all come together and experience um i'd like to go to the theater to have an emotional experience and so we all sit in a room with a bunch of other people and there really is something uh not to get too heavy but there's something spiritual about it that we all go through it together whether it's laughing or crying mm -hmm. or whatever it is so yeah. i think that michael what about you well said. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I would say I've learned to stay in the moment. That you can plan as much as you want. <laughs> you can budget as much as you want, and uh, and think you have everything set and ready to go. And things change at the, the drop of a hat. And and so it's taught me to stay in the moment, um, think outside the box, and, and be prepared for um, to to uh, to rethink things. Yeah. I think that it, it, I think all of that, all of that is ex is exactly how I feel as well. I mean, you're right. You can't. There's only so much 
planning you can do. <laughs> One day at a time. One day at a time. <laughs> um, Back to game shows and sitcoms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I didn't get out of here. She did, I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> well, anyway, thanks so much for joining us for Red Talks. We do it every uh, Tuesday at 6.30. And then you have a, do you guys have a weekly show as well? Ours are starting in September. They're going to highlight every okay. show for next season. Yeah, That's right. great, yep. great. So um, the Kate Playhouse will be back next summer. It will be back yep. next summer. Mm -hmm. and we're hoping to have something um, as soon as possible, as soon as we can figure out what, as soon as actually the New York State is not allowing us to uh, perform. So that's one reason why we not we can't do it in Oklahoma allows uh, performing. Can you actually, is Massachusetts, are you allowed to perform in the we, theater? We're able to, no, well, we're able to do some things outside now for a very limited amount of uh, individual. But there are, there are a lot of regulations as to what you can do. They don't encourage singing. They don't encourage wind instruments, those ah. sorts of things. Yeah. Was that just a weird? That was my, that might have been Gertie. What Gertie. was that? It was Gertie. some weird Something noise happened. up in the rafters. We're not sure. What there was, happening. I thought that was just like a wall. It really <laughs> no, That was really bizarre. <laughs> that was weird. That was weird. weird. Gertie. 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 Yeah, Gertie does haunt the theater. Yo. <laughs> no, sure. All right, thanks so much, everyone. <laughs> we'll see you next week. Next week is going to be a special. Um, uh, John's going to do the entire Gertrude Lawrence catalog for you next week. <laughs> next week, John's going to do it. I could do it. It's one sure minute of Gertrude. Lawrence. I used to do the King and I in my parents' driveway. I'm ready to go. Did you have a hoop skirt? I, I, maybe. Mom, do we have a hoop skirt? Does it still have it? We had one. This is a show. We could, this could actually be a real show. Right. We just do this every week. So thanks so much, and see you next week. We're going to be uh, um, seeing the kids from Rock Camp. Rock Camp is happening right now. Um, just started today. <laughs> I wish I would have known about rock camp. Oh, These kids get together and they play musical instruments and they write songs and they and then they do a big performance and we're going to show um, some of that and we've got some testimonies from the kids coming up next week. So um, a lot of camps have been going on, which we're very proud of. We've had we have 33 kids in camp. Wow right now in the theater. But we have a big space, so they're all spaced out. And we've done a really good job of making sure that everyone's take, taken care of and tested, not tested, but, but temperature checks and stuff coming in make, and make sure that they sanitize. So uh, we still have some stuff line, uh, actually available for your kids. Circus camp and other camps, please check out our website, redhouse.org, and please donate. Thank you so much. Have a great night. Please be safe, and uh, we'll see you next week. Bye. <laughs>